All right, today we're going to go out and check out the foliage here around the Lakes Region, New Hampshire. The, the leaves are starting to turn. I'm going to take a look at that. And we may talk about aeronautical decision making or good aeronautical decision making. So we'll see how we go from here uh, during this flight. Laconia traffic, Super Cub 816 Whiskey, we're taxing on Charlie to runway 8 Mount Perry, Laconia. Uh, it's a beautiful day today. Not a cloud in the sky. Not that much haze. We've had a tremendous amount of haze for the past week. Good to see that it's somewhat cleared up. Looking over my right wing, I do see some foliage in the kind of more wetland areas. At first uh, glance, not a lot of foliage here around the southern part of Lake Winnipesaukee. But we'll go a little bit further north and check out into the uh, Sandwich Mountain areas, Osby Mountain areas. Actually, I should say, looking off the Osby Mountains right now, I do see a lot more color on top of that. We'll head over in that direction. Not a lot of traffic out here today. We're now October 2nd, and it's a Monday, and just pretty quiet looking late. Yeah, I wanted to talk briefly about good aeronautical decision making. Uh, we've had a lot of haze here this past week and it's definitely been difficult uh, seeing pretty low visibility not the greatest at daytime certainly not in the Thank evening you, certainly not in the evening and when we're doing our flight planning and doing risk assessment risk, risk assessment um, besides looking at our own possible poor attitudes for certain things and knowing how to come up with anecdotes for those uh, we also need to look at um, the four categories, PAVE, if you remember correctly from your training. Uh, the pilot, the aircraft, the environment, and any external factors. Uh, if the pilot is feeling ill in any way, the I'm safe checklist, if you will, uh, then uh, probably not a good day to go fly. Uh, the aircraft, if there's maintenance issues, again, not a good reason to fly. we got aircraft issues. The environment, the haze that we talked about, just I talked about a minute ago. Very poor visibility during the day. All you can see about 3,000, 4,000 feet uh, up before you can start losing the uh, ground. And then particularly worse in the evening. So if you're flying VFR in the evening, I highly recommend you consider um, the weather very carefully before you go out. Make sure your uh, aircraft is good, your lights are all working, and the visibility is proper. Even if it says it's VFR, pay uh, extra close attention to uh, the temperature and dew point spread, any mist, any haze that may potentially come along during your route of flight. And then the last factor is external factors. The last uh, category is external factors. If you have a deadline to meet um, as part of your flying or to get somewhere, uh, there's no reason to get anywhere when flying, to be honest. If you've got to stop and wait for better weather, wait, wait for your health to improve, you do that. You don't go out and fly. Um, when there's external factors that um, are putting you at risk. So if you follow that paved checklist and look at all the risks in each one of those categories um, and can't really mitigate them or transfer them, etc., probably not a good day to fly. Okay, off of my 2 o'clock here is the Ossipee Mountain Range, and we're certainly seeing some color out there today. I'm getting near 4,000 feet. I'll probably level off here. Get my cylinder temperatures down. They're a little bit warm here. Get herself leveled off and cooled off. Now, certainly in the kind of wetland areas, the color is starting to show. Uh, here on Montbo Neck Road, or Montbo Neck, I'm clearly seeing a lot of color in the wetland areas. And again, on top of the mountains, uh, particularly right now off my right, I can see Ospie has got a lot of color at its peak. Right off my 12 o'clock, looking out over the Sandwich Mountains, uh, you can see there's color up there as well. Not sure how far I'm going to get up in that area. The winds are kind of um, bumpy, and I know they're going to get worse when I get up into the mountains. I'm feeling it here as I'm here in the Osby Mountains. The winds are out of the uh, east, northeast, and so they're rolling over those Osby Mountains when I'm a little bit higher up. So I don't get any downdrafts. and keeping it a little bit smoother. Looking off to my left, I see Squam Lake out in the distance. Not a lot of color out there. 
off my uh, 1 o'clock, I see White Face Mountain right off, again, my, almost my nose. And then maybe my 2 o'clock, I see Mount Takora. Those are the White Face, is the uh, rock formation. In regards to ADM, again, in addition to doing the unsafe checklist on your own health, and the four categories under PAVE, uh, we also want to look at the three P's, perceive something going wrong, process if you need to do any something, and then perform if you got to do it. Uh, when you're looking at your risk, you want to sit there and analyze the risk. Can you mitigate those risks? Can you transfer those risks? Can you eliminate them? Can you live with what those risks are? Um, if those risks were to happen, are they catastrophic? Going over Mulberry Airport, uh, I see my uh, friend's new experimental super cub on floats in the water down there at Ferry Pond. My former student, that is private pilot, license with me. I'll go up here just a little ways just to see some of the color showing up here in the uh, Hampshire uh, White Mountains um, Valley area. Off to my off my nose is this town of Sandwich. That uh, Sandwich Fair is coming up here, I think, this weekend. And off to my 2 o'clock is Ossipi. Yeah, it looks like we still got another week or two before color really starts to pop in the lakes region from what I can see. The mountains to the north, you can see Mount Washington right off my 12 o'clock. Put my other camera out here, see if I can get a better shot of that. Let's see if I can get a good picture out here without uh, dropping my camera out outside the plane. And there is the center of Sandwich. Kind of sneak over toward it. You can see the fairgrounds is in the process of being assembled. All right, I think we're going to head back toward the lake. As I do this turn, you can really see some of the mountains out here off to my uh, left. The Sandwich Mountains, again, white face at my 11 o'clock, 12 o'clock is Chikora. And as we turn here, we'll go right next to the Ossipies. And there we have Omber Airport, right off my 2 o'clock. And again, Lake Winnipesaukee out there in the distance. And there is Palm Lake off my right wing and Red Hill below it. Way out there in the distance is Ossipi Lake. And as we look down here, around the Ossipi Ring Dyke area, you can see a lot of color on the tops and working its way down about a third to half of the mountain. Just beautiful day for flying. Go parallel the Ossipi's for a bit. Not too close. Again, may have a little bit of a northeast wind here that'll be rolling down that, make it a little bumpy. I'd like to stay above that. Interesting to see the drainages down on the top of Ossipi. Color at the top, and then it works its way down the drainage and gets green. And off my left wing here is Castle on the Clouds in that field. So yes, in regards to good aeronautical decision making, when you go out and fly, first of all, look at the four categories that are under PAVE. Pilot, aircraft, environment, and external factors. Make sure in every one of those categories, any risks that you find are risks that you can accept, or that you need to transfer, or that you need to eliminate, or make a decision that we're not going to fly today uh, for any one of those risks in those categories. Uh, the pilot, there's an unsafe checklist, illness, medical, alcohol, drugs, um, stress, um, fatigue, and external factors. In regards to the aircraft, maintenance issues, make sure you have no maintenance issues with the aircraft, that you've done a proper pre-flight before you've flown. Environment concerns, the weather, as I mentioned earlier, we've had a lot of haze this past uh, week. Tremendous haze. Once you get about three or 4,000 feet, you could not barely see the ground anymore. And it's even worse if you're flying VFR at night. I highly recommend if you're going to fly VFR at night uh, that you do so only in the best of nights, uh, that you maybe fly with a second person or a second pilot. And 
if you have an instrument rating, I highly recommend you consider doing an instrument flight. In many countries, most countries, an instrument flight um, rating is required to fly at night. Not in the U.S., which I have no problem with. That's good, but um, with that privilege becomes a lot more responsibility. Uh, even if you are just a VFR pilot, if you have some knowledge on your IFR equipment in your aircraft, you can use it to your advantage um, to make sure that you could fly an approach under VFR conditions um, into an airport, maybe mitigating the risk of um, going off route or into an area where there's mountains like where I'm around, uh, or other obstructions. I do that every time on uh, my night flights with my private pilot students just to give them exposure to what an instrument approach looks like. Um, also for additional, most importantly for additional safety. So consider doing that if you're an instructor or if you're a VFR pilot going visiting an instructor that can maybe a CFII that can give you some time um, to know how to use your equipment in the event you have an emergency or number two, um, just to add an additional situational awareness. You're not expected or should be ever thinking about flying IFR without a rating. Um, but having those tools at your fingertips could mean the difference between life and death. So uh, make sure you take advantage of those tools. All right, we're going to go over here and fly out over the lake a little bit more. Maybe we'll drop down a little bit. Off my 12 o'clock is the town of Wolfboro. 19 mile bay below me. Again, in the marshy wetland area, you can definitely see a lot of color in that area. Not so much right on the shoreline. I honestly think that the uh, warm water helps keep the uh, foliage a little bit greener, a little bit longer uh, in fall time on the lakes region. Let's do a little bit of a 45 degree turn here just to see down below at this bay. We'll just level off here 3,000. Get a nice look out of here. Not so sure how we're going to see much from this camera angle here. I might go back and do a 360 the other with the other camera. That is a 360, it's a 360, so I can get a, in a spherical image of the ground as I'm flying around. I'll go back the other way just so we get a good look here down below with the Insta360 camera. There on the right. Yeah, if you can see off my right wing tip now, definitely can see some of that color going around this bay. I think that might be 19 Mile Bay. Spiderweb nurse right off my nose there. We'll head over to Wolfboro and circle over that for a moment. Another topic is, uh, again, VFR flying at night. Um, I found here, this is a prime example, uh, where I've flown in this Cub at night for many hours. And when you're flying here, particularly in the wintertime, and there's not a lot of people in their homes here in the lake, uh, it's a very dark, very black kind of abyss. Um, so you can get easily confused with what's up and what's down when flying in those conditions. So you really have to rely on your instruments to give you an extra level of situational awareness. Keep the blue sky up, they say. Well, when it's nighttime and it's all black below and it's all black above, it's hard to know what side the blue is. So without an attitude indicator that's working properly, you could find yourself in a world of hurt. I find myself trying to follow lights at night, um, street lights, road lights. I'll try to stay over lit areas a little bit more so, again, I don't have to worry about some type of an illusion or getting confused on what's up, what's down. Um, I do that in addition to looking at my instrument. So I highly recommend if you're going to fly at night to really do a steward on the best of nights and the proper um, equipment. All right, we're entering over the town of Wolfboro. I'll drop down a little bit more, maybe 2,500 feet MSL. That's Wentworth Lake off my nose. And just an absolutely stunning day. Just kind of circle gently over the lake, over the Wolfboro Bay. I'll we'll just do a little bit of a steep turn around here or take a nice look around here. It's one thing about having the bars in the plane here. It's nice to grab onto when you're doing these turns.
like the downtown strip has got quite a line of traffic as usual. A lot more fun being up in the air, seeing the sights than on the on the ground. Brewster Academy just below me. It's the BA private high school. Let's see if I get a couple shots with the camera. There we are, looking to the east. Outside of Wolfboro Bay. The old Wolfboro Airport there. Nice little place for an emergency if you had to. Glad it's still wide open and not loaded with houses in the middle of it. Nice thing about a Cub, windows open here. Beautiful temperatures. Might be a little bit noisier though, probably is. There's my 3,000 feet. Bring my power back here. I'll level off, make it a little bit quieter. Coming up on Rattlesnake Island here. It's a long one. Boy, the uh, western tip of Rattlesnake is just looking so perfect today, just so crystal clear. And over toward the belt naps, you can see that it's, uh, there's some color on the tops, but still got a long way to go. Take a quick shot over here at Gun Stock here for a moment. There's Governor's Island off my right. Take a dip there for a second. Let's stay coordinated. There it is. And then off my left. Is Ware's Beach. I'm looking out here a little bit more on the west side of the lake. Um, there's a definitely yellow, quite a bit of yellowish tinge to the to the landscape. A little bit of red again in some of the wetter areas. And here we are in Meredith Bay. Off my uh, 11 o'clock is Wakawan Lake. Yeah, I think it'll be a lot better in terms of the color in another week or two. Got a lot of rain this year, and I don't know, I think it might have um, caused a delay in the foliage. We're already October 2nd, and usually we're having more color than this. Again, it's definitely um, more orange to the north as you head up toward the White Mountains, and even when I was looking at the Sandwich Mountains here. But here around the lake itself, Lake Lakes region, Still got a ways to go. And I'm enjoying it. Who couldn't enjoy this? This is the best time of year. Uh, people ask me, how do I get the angles I do? Well, with the Insta360 camera, it's like a sphere, and it takes uh, basically a 360 by 360 um, image or video as it's recording, and then I can post-edit it to any angle I want to see and then upload that into my main editor for integrating with the other camera video in the audio. So I'll just go over Meredith here. Uh, there's my ADSB traffic. Nobody nobody a factor here. Well I think we're gonna head back to the airport. Another turn over Meredith. And again downtown Meredith here. Just a beautiful day. Alright, let's get some weather here. We're calling you traffic, Super Cub 816 Whiskey Romeo, four and a half miles to the north inbound for runway 8. So if you enjoyed this video, consider hitting the like button and subscribing to the channel. I try to come out with these videos pretty regularly and um, would appreciate that like and that subscribe. And if you have any feedback or comments, make sure to comment down below.